strike up the band. This is James Devine. Welcome to the Music Ed Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to give you 15 warm-up ideas that you can use, implement right away in your classroom. Now, I once had Dr. Kramer come and give a clinic with my bands, and he said, don't call them warm-ups. Change the name to Ensemble Sensitivity Training. And I absolutely love that because that's what we're doing. We're training the ensemble to be able to use the things we do in our warm-ups in all of their music, no matter what they're playing or doing. So here we go. There are some that you may already know about and some that will will be new to you. So the chord scale. If you're not familiar with the chord scale, basically you're doing the scale in rounds. You can either do two groups or three groups. And so a group comes in on the third note when the first group gets to the third note, the second group comes in and they're playing whole notes together and they're hearing what these chords sound like as they as they go. Another one, another technique is called alternate start. And in an alternate start, you're going to have split the group maybe into two. And so then they're, they both start on the first note. You bring in, let's say, the group to your left on the first note and then bring in the group to your right on the first note. And then you're going to have the group on your left change to note two while group one continues to hold the first note. And then you'll direct the group on your right to then go up to note two. And you can even put some variations in this where you have group two be the first one to move and then the first group go back and meet with them. It kind of creates some tension and release in the in the sound and some dissonance that ends up being good to have two groups so that they can try to play equally strong with each other. There's the, the Remingtons that you take the scale degrees, for example, you might do eight, seven, eight, six, eight, five, and do them as whole notes. You can do this where you go one, two, one, three, one, four. Then that can be very helpful to for the students to be able to make all of those notes equal so that none of the notes end up sticking out. Incorporate 16th notes. You might go from eight 16th notes on each scale tone to four to two and then to one. This works especially well on a scale they're already familiar with. So for example, B flat, you might go bum 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 and then eventually you're going to bum 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 you might try patterns of scale. Use like chord patterns, one, three, five, seven, eight. You can do the flat seven, the dominant seven, the minor seven, minor seven, flat five, diminished. You can do all sorts of things. So just have them play this. This works great for more advanced students that know their scales pretty well, just to kind of create a variation of the, of the scale that they already know. Obviously minor scales, we can do um, minor scales from related to the major. I always tell students it relates to the sixth note of the major. That's their new starting note, and they might have to take it down an octave, and then the minor scale is all the same notes. Once we've talked about it a couple of times, and I've had to stop students who are playing a wrong note, then they usually end up getting this pretty well. Another technique is called add a note, and this is where they do the first and then the second note of the scale and go back to the first and now they add a note and they go second, third, second, first. And now they're going to add another note again, second, third, fourth, three, two, one. And so each time you're adding a note, this works really well as quarter notes. I found that this worked really well with marching band as well. Obviously, we have the scale in thirds. If they're already familiar with the scale, they can do um, this scale in thirds. Sometimes I just extend the range, so we might go to the ninth to the 10th, to the 11th, and I explain to them the 9th is the same as the 2nd, the 10th is the same as the 3rd, um, etc. And so that you'll be surprised how many struggle with that at first. We might also do twinkle twinkle in a key where I'll kind of explain it to them. I'll walk them through that we have one one five five six six five, and then we might play just that and then do four four three three two two one, and then we put the whole thing together. Chromatic scale. Corrals. Now, I love something called function corrals. You buy this once and then you can use it forever. Function corrals 
have the corral in a formula. So they're written out with just the scale degrees like one, three, five, four, and it's in four part soprano, alto, tenor, bass. And so the great thing about the function corrals, you can do them in any key. So there's about 25 of them in the, in the packet that you can buy. And that times the 12 different keys, now you have like 300 different function corrals you can use. I've never gotten where we used them all and were bored with them with any groups I ever worked with because there's so many of them. The um, 16th note runs to the 9th. That kind of fits in with what we were talking about earlier with 16th notes, um, but you might go to the 9th just so it evens out um, with the, the number of beats. Another thing that you can do is you have the students all ascend in the scale the same, and then a, on the descend, you're going to have a, a fourth of them or so stop on the seventh, and then other people, everyone else will go to the sixth, and then a fourth of them you'll designate to stop on the fifth, and then everybody will move, everyone else will move to the fourth, and then a fourth of them will stop on the fourth, and then um, that last group will keep moving to the second, and you, and this is all by, by direction. So you're directing them to do this. So basically you all go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then coming back down, some of the students will stay on the seventh, some on the fifth, some on the four, some on the two once they get there. And once that last group gets to the two, so you're then holding a seven, five, four, two, then you'll cue the group again, and the sevenths will resolve, resolve up to the eighth, the fours will come down to a three, and then the twos will come down to a one, and then you get a major major triad. When you're trying to teach crescendos and decrescendos or even working through it in the music and having trouble with that, you might incorporate hissing in your ensemble and have them do crescendos in the while hissing. So it kind of sounds like this. And that's going to teach them to really continue their air going through. Another thing that I like to use with working on dynamics and getting kids to understand the levels of dynamics is I'll tell them to divide their dynamic level into six categories. One is the softest, six is the loudest. And we go from a one, and usually after we do it one time, I can tell them, you know, you can get that one much softer. And then we go through two, three, four, five, six. And then a lot of times, especially less mature musicians on that six, they're going to try to play it too loud and so then it gives us a chance to talk about how you never push beyond the limits of the instrument. Yes, you can get it louder, but when, when it starts sounding bad, you don't want to, um, to do that. So we'll go through one, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then we'll do it without the numbers where I am just giving the students hand signals. And then finally, when you're doing your warm ups or ensemble sensitivity training, make sure that you start training your students to use the two second statue rule. So once you cut or once you're finished an exercise, everyone should freeze, including you, for about two seconds. And this just lets the note hang in the air for a little bit. And if they get in the habit of it doing ensemble sensitivity training, they are more likely to incorporate it while playing in a song. I hope that these tips have been helpful. I would love to come visit your school to present a professional development session or my keynote, How Teachers Saved My Life. The Music and Podcast, where you get quick and easy tips for how to be a better.